Welcome back to the Science Institute Review of Computer Forensics, and welcome back to the channel, my friends. So this is the third book out of five in the SANS GX Computer Forensics course. And if you haven't watched any of the earlier amazing videos, don't worry, guys, because neither have I. But anyways, if you're studying for the GCFE, let's review shell items and removable device profiling this week on the secret letters of a hacker. So what the heck is a shell item? Well, if we look at the definition from Microsoft, it's a data object that contains information that can be used to access another data object. And that enables a user to have a shortcut file, also known as an LNK file. So basically, it's like a pointer to get from A to B. But as always, Microsoft has to complicate words and descriptions. So anyways, LNK files are important in forensics because these files can be analyzed to identify access to files and folders on a local drive, a share drive, or a removable drive like a USB. And we can also identify things like the full path, volume type, when the file was first opened and last accessed, the file size, timestamps, and those timestamps are important because they can prove things like the file or folder creation time and whether or not that file or folder was copied from the user's computer to an adversary's computer. So let me turn my screen around and show you guys exactly what I mean. All right, so here we're going to use a program called LECMD by Eric Zimmerman, and we're gonna analyze a LNK file. And LNK files are stored in your recent file. So here we're analyzing capture.png.lnk. So what we're looking for is if this file was copied. So here you can see the target creation date on October 26th at 4.48 UTC time. And the target modification date was May 6th, 2021 at 2.33 UTC time. How can a target be modified before it was created? And the answer is, is that this means that the file was copied from the user's computer. So this information shows that the target was copied and the source file information shows that this was first opened on November 21st, 2022, and it was last opened on December 9th, 2022. So here we can see the source file, which is over in the C drive. But if we go down to the volume information, we can see that it was moved over to the F drive downloads folder. And that's how we know that this file was copied from one location to another location. So after shell items and LNK analysis, the book jumps into jump list forensics, no pun intended. Now what are jump lists? Well, if you right click on a program in your taskbar, you can see all the recent items opened in the past. So let me show you what I mean. So if we right click on any of these items down here in the taskbar, we can see the recent items. You can see my notes here. You can see my recents in VMware. So the information in jump list is stored in your C users app data folder all the way down in recent automatic destinations. Now there's two jump list locations, automatic destinations and custom destinations. So you're probably wondering what the heck is the point of jump list and what does it provide? The point of analyzing jump list 
is to prove the existence of an application on the machine. So just because you uninstall or remove an application doesn't mean the metadata along with it has been removed. And if you need to prove the existence of an application, you can do so with jump list. Now you're probably wondering how the heck can we analyze this information? Well, we can do that either by going over here to Eric Zimmerman's GitHub. And let's say, let's take, for example, the name of it. So let me just copy this one. If we do a find for what we're looking for in our information, we can see that this jump list correlates to Microsoft Paint. Now, if we want to identify everything in here, we can come over to Eric Zerman's page and we can analyze everything by running JLECMD, which is a jump list parser. So while we're on here, let's move along into what the book else talks about. So if we come down to my notes for the exam, book one is in blue, book two is in red, and book three is in green. So the book started off with shell items, then it talked about Allen K files, how to parse that information. Then it went into jump lists, how to parse that information. The location of jump lists, again, there is automatic destinations, which will give us creation time and modification times. And then there's custom destinations. Then the book jumps into JLE, CMD, how to parse that information. We then get into shell bag explorer shell bags tracking folder interactions which audits folders opening closing whether folders have been deleted renamed or copied the book then finally jumps into usb forensic so what a usb hid is or human interface device it talks about the locations of that it talks about the locations of a usb media transfer protocol which is basically like mobile phones, tablet devices, cameras, scanners, all these can be analyzed that get plugged into a computer. USB MSC, which is the mass storage class, the protocols used, how to audit USBs. They get things like the vendor ID information, the product ID information, the device ID serial number, USB mount point drive letters, uh, the purpose of this is to determine the last drive letter assigned to a mounted device. So there is a ton of information that can be pulled from a USB device once it's plugged into a computer. And all that is covered at the end of book three. So this is basically how we can manually audit a USB device. Now, if we wanna automate this for us, we can come over here to USB detective Dot com where we can investigate USB devices plugged into a machine. So everything that we did manually, it will do automatically for us and create an Excel spreadsheet of the device history report. So this also adds LNK file and jump list activity to report and provide deeper insight into user activity, identify encryption types for encrypted devices, automatically process and aggregate data from volume shadow copies, identify device removal times from the device cleanup in Windows 10. So a ton of good automated information if you want to analyze USB devices. Now, if you stuck around to the end of this video, you guys are way more dedicated than I am, but I appreciate everyone out there and I appreciate everyone on the Patreon page who are grabbing some extra hacking content and supporting the channel. Once we get through all this computer forensics craziness, I'll post my notes over on the channel and we'll get back into bug bounty scripting. So thanks again for all your support guys over there on Patreon and helping keep the lights on in this place. And until the next video, hit me up in the comments section. Find me over there on Discord because Discord is obviously over there at my neighbor's house and I'll see you guys out there on the hunt.